everybody. I'm here with Sheldon Ledich. That's how you say your last name, right? You pronounced it perfect. Okay, good. I've been saying it for years that way. Yeah, you so. pronounced it perfect. Good. I, I don't want to say it wrong. Okay. Um, so uh, Sheldon is the uh, director of many, many movies, but including one of my favorites, which is Only the Strong, which is about pretty much most of what we're going to talk about in a second. Um, but first of all, I do want to know, how did you get into, uh, like, you know, I guess, uh, movie making and directing? Well, this is a long, long story. I don't know how, uh, how much time you have I've on got, your, hey, on I've your got phone time there. On there. But um, uh, I um, made a short film. Um, I, first, I went to the AFI, made a short uh, uh, video film there. And then afterwards, uh, after I got out, um, I wrote, I co-wrote a play called Tracers about the Vietnam War. And there was one particular sequence in it that I felt was very cinematic. And they actually didn't make it part of the play because it was really too hard to stage and it just didn't really fit in with the rest of it. Um, you ever hear of Tracers? I saw you <laughs> saw the thing that you had of the it. The poster, I, right? Yeah, the right. poster. Is it uh, is it available? Well, mm, it's a play. So, oh, it's a play. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, it's not like you can get a DVD or a Blu-ray of it. Um, but anyways, I wrote this one sequence, and um, we didn't put it in the play, and I wanted to turn it into a little movie. So I I went and um, put this. This movie together shot it in 16 millimeter shot at uh, Camp Pendleton and uh, the movie turned out uh, yeah, fairly decent uh, 16 millimeter low budget it was uh, I think the total running time was about 20 minutes and um, we used this movie uh, to get me my first few directing deals oh nice uh, in fact um, I was good friends with Sam Raimi back then Sam saw it he liked it uh, he got me a deal with uh, Dino De Laurentiis to direct a movie. The movie ended up not happening, but uh, but that was my first real directing deal uh, for a feature film. And then um, uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme saw it. He liked it. And so he wanted me to direct a movie that he was going to star in. Uh, and uh, I had met him after Bloodsport, because I wrote Bloodsport. And uh, we met afterwards. So uh, uh, Jean-Claude showed it to Menachem Golan at Canon Films, and I ended up having a deal to direct a movie at Canon Films. Nice. That didn't happen either. Was that around the time that Canon kind of fell apart? No, it was before. Like, it was I mean, when Canon was, okay. doing, was doing oh, wow. really well. Uh, hang on a second. I, I got to get something to drink here. Okay. Or my voice will start to go. That's, <laughs> that's fine. And... Uh, uh, so, anyways, then, um, uh, hang on a second. So, Menachem wanted me to direct a movie with Van Damme. And uh, the movie that we were going to do was called The Corsican Brothers, which is about twins. <clears throat> Took place in France and Corsica. And uh, we had a deal to do that. And I was going to direct the movie. Canon even made a poster for it. Uh, ended up not happening for various reasons. And um, that ended up going, we ended up, um, th they gave me the rights to the script that I had written for them. And I sold that to Moshe Diamat, and we ended up turning Corsican Brothers into Double Impact. Nice. So, yeah, but that was my second film, my second feature that I directed, because before that we did Lionheart. And even to do Lionheart, uh, the producer of that, Sunil Shah, was, he was nervous about giving a first time director a shot at directing a movie. And we showed him, Jean-Claude showed him Lion, uh, uh, my little movie, Firefight. And uh, that helped convince Sunil that I could uh, direct the film, so I ended up doing Lionheart. And then uh, after Lionheart, we did Double Impact get a Jean Claude and I for uh, uh, for a different company, uh, so that's kind of how things progressed. And then a French producer named Sammy Hadida saw Double Impact, and actually he was he distributed Lionheart and Double Impact and Bloodsport, 
in France. And so Sammy wanted me to uh, make a martial arts movie. And he's the one that came to me with the capoeira idea. Uh, because um, we had all been at this martial arts festival in Paris. Jean-Claude, Sammy, and I were all there. And there was a capoeira demonstration as part of this, uh, this festival. And that's where Sammy got the idea to do a capoeira movie, action movie with capoeira. So he came to me and asked me if I could do that. And uh, we made a deal. And my friend Luis Esteban and I co-wrote a screenplay. And we ended up shooting this movie in uh, Miami. Was he the one who knew a little bit more about Capoeira? Or is he just a, a friend of yours that you asked? He was a friend of mine who was also a martial artist. Uh, so he knew martial arts. In fact, Luis and I had originally come up with a story for Only the Strong, not about Capoeira. It was going to be about uh, karate, and it was going to take place in New York City. So when Sammy came to me and said, hey, um, let's come up with a Capoeira movie, uh, I got in touch with Luis. I said, hey, why don't we take that Only the Strong screenplay? Rather than karate, it'll be about Capoeira. And that's sort of the genesis of that project. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, and you also wrote uh, Rambo 3. And co-wrote it with Stallone. Co-wrote it. Yeah. With Stallone. Mm -hmm. How was that experience? Uh, it was a good experience, actually. Uh, uh, Stallone and I hit it off really well. Uh, the way I got hooked up with Stallone, he was looking for uh, a writer for Rambo 3. And I had written a Vietnam screenplay called Firebase. And um, there were a lot of people in Hollywood that really loved this screenplay. And it got into Stallone's hands. Stallone loved it. And that's how I ended up hooking up with him. And he liked the fact that I was also a Vietnam veteran. He thought that this would, be, would help uh, lend some authenticity to the story. So that's how I hooked up with him. And we got along pretty damn good uh, uh, most of the time. Great. Um... Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, we were just talking about it earlier, but like, uh, you know, Rambo 3, I, I just really enjoyed. So I was happy to see your name on the credits of that movie. Yeah, well, I'm, uh, uh, for me, it's my second favorite Rambo movie, even though it's the one I worked on. But I like, I still like the second Rambo movie the best. The one that uh, James Cameron co-wrote the story of. Uh, the one that takes place in Vietnam. It's still my favorite. But, um, Compared to the other Rambo movies, after I saw the last one, uh, uh, the one called Last Blood, I started feeling pretty damn good about Rambo 3. <laughs> I thought Rambo 3 was, was so far superior in so many ways. I don't it. know. Uh, Rambo, the, the next one after that, was pretty, pretty good. I was surprised. I was kind of mad that they left it at that. You know, like, or didn't leave it at that. They, they went on. Are you, you talking know. about Rambo 4? Yeah, the Rambo 4. In, in, uh, in Myanmar. Yeah. Um, yeah, that one was good. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was good. But I like three better. I, uh, you know, I got a personal bias. I there. I think yeah, I think and that's <laughs> and that's great cuz mm -hmm. um when you actually do enjoy the movie after it's been made, that's that's mm -hmm. a big thing. Um right. and you don't have to say the movie, but are there any movies that you feel have been like that? Like are there any movies that you have uh, seeing the movie afterwards and you're like, oh, I, I'm, not, I'm not entirely happy with the, the way that came out. Yeah, there was a movie I made um, called The Last Patrol, which I shot in Israel. <clears throat> Dolph Lundgren was the star. Uh, I did not write the screenplay. <clears throat> I was not happy with the screenplay. Uh, but um, um, I wanted to go to Israel, bring my family. <laughs> I brought my whole family. You wanted a paycheck, too. Uh, <laughs> you know, you like didn't get paid a fortune for it uh but it was it was a job i was in israel i was working with dolph lundgren so that was uh it was a really fun experience i must say it was uh, some of the most fun i've ever had making a movie but the movie itself did not turn out well because we did not have nearly the budget we needed we didn't have hardly any money the producer was not really uh, forthright with us uh uh, told us he had a lot more money, he didn't. And uh, the screenplay was not good. I was gonna fix up the screenplay. Dolph and I were both, neither one of us really liked the screenplay and we both had agreed. Uh, hey, you're gonna, Dolph said, you're gonna fix up that screenplay, right? I said, absolutely. Well, the original writers were also the 
producers. Uh, producers, and they wouldn't let me touch a word. They thought that this thing was gold. So um, I did my best uh, with it. It's got some good stuff. It's got some good scenes, but uh, uh, overall, uh, not happy with that one. Well, that's a bummer. Hey, um, let me. Uh, can you pause for a sec? Let me get some. Sure. Some All right, and we're back. Um, so let's talk about Only the Strong. That's the one I really, really, like, I've told you that's my favorite of yours. Mm -hmm. It's the one that really, I think it's the first one that I, like, noticed your name on it, you okay. know, and everything. Mm -hmm. um, so let's, uh, I guess you, you said that you kind of worked with that with Lewis and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, the main character's name is Lewis, was that? Yeah, right? yeah, because yeah. it was kind of based, he was kind of uh, based on Luis Esteban. So uh, Esteban... In, is a Spanish version of Stephen, so that's I, so we named him Louis Stevens, basically <laughs> after after Luis. That's awesome. And Luis is in the movie too. He's uh, he's one of the Brazilian bad guys. Uh, he gets kicked in the face, gets knocked out. Um, we have a scene where there's like this machete dance, where like the, the two gangs are coming together and they've got two guys doing a dance with these machetes. And Luis is the Brazilian guy. Oh, yeah. Nice. So we had somebody else that was supposed to do it. He couldn't do it right. Uh, he couldn't. Uh, he couldn't stay with the rhythm properly. And um, Luis was there on the set. Uh, I brought him along. I, I did something that most directors don't do. I actually invited the writer <laughs> to hang with us. And so he's there. And I, I, I say, Lou, can you do this? Well, I'll give it a try. He got out there and, and he did it. So, uh, so he's in the movie also. That's great. Um, so what was it like working with Mark Dacascos? Uh Mark was, was just terrific. He was, uh, he's able to do so many things. That's what I like about Mark. Uh, he can do the martial arts. He can do the gymnastics. Like all those gymnastics moves, those were him. Uh, he can work with weapons. Uh, there's, just, there's just nothing that he can't do, and his acting is really good also. Uh, like with, with Van Damme, just to contrast the two, Van Damme is not good with weapons. Uh, he's never trained with swords and things like. He's okay with guns, you know. It's that's that's easy. He just pull the trigger, but he can't do swords and knives and all of that. Mark could do all of that, and Van Damme can't do gymnastics either. When, whenever we had a gymnastic move, we'd have to get one of his doubles to do it. But Mark could do it all, so that was uh, it was a real pleasure working with him, and he was. Uh, very cooperative, very easy to work with. Van Damme can dance, though. We've seen him he dance. He can dance, yeah. He can dance drunk and, uh, like, yeah. from, uh, was a kickboxer. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, um, I, I, I really adore, like, Mark in it because I feel like he's got that kind of really nice, you know, like, he, he played the character very um, sweetly, you know, but, he's you know. He's very simpatico. Yeah, and you definitely feel for his character. Um, and you know, and there's that love relationship between right. him and Stacy Travis, yeah, which I think works sort of okay. Um, uh, I'm not that good with romantic movies, romantic scenes. I did my best with that, and uh, uh, I think it kind of works. But uh, um, let's let's talk about the villain. Let's talk about yes. Paco. Paco. Paco is a good friend of mine, and I first met Paco. He auditioned for Lionheart. And we used him in Lionheart. He's the guy in the pool fight, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, uh, and he did some capoeira moves in that pool fight scene. So he knew some capoeira. Uh, so I got in touch with Paco uh, about playing the villain. I thought he's, he'd make a great villain. Plus, he already knew some capoeira. So uh, uh, he, was able to, he was able to really pull it off. And people recognize him on the street all the time. Like, hey, you're that guy. <laughs> you know, they, they recognize him from Only the Strong. Oh, what was the uh, Brazilian guy's name? Um, the one that uh, was the uh, cousin or brother of... Uh, oh, of right, right. The, uh, he, he was actually um, Richard Coca. Yes, he uh, was wonderful. I he's just, great, yeah. He, I, I love that line. The, one of my favorite lines of the whole movie is, uh, you, you just made it your damn business. You know, when he's right, like right. fighting him and everything. Like just, I, that movie is quotable to this day. Like I still know every line from that movie if I watch it. Well, you know? when people come up to Paco on the street and they recognize him and say, hey, Santo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he has, yeah, he has that presence yeah. too. Like he, I mean, how tall is that man? He's, he's starting to piss to me off. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to look at some photos from Only the Strong right now. 
Okay. Um, let's see this Van Dam, but here's uh, yeah, this is me on the set of Only the Strong, and here also with uh, Mark DeCoscos, and uh, well, that's my daughter. This is in the um, that early scene in the Brazilian village. So I, all three of my daughters were in that scene. Oh, nice. This is uh, our first assistant director, our director of photography, Ed Pay. Um, and here's a few more shots up on the crane. This is when we did that fire scene. We all had our, our masks on. Um, a few more shots. Here's like the whole, the whole crew wow. got into a photo. Um, now there's Mark. Okay. Yeah. Um, Oh, these are like, that's awesome that these are Polaroids, you know, yeah. basically. No, they're, well, they're not Polaroids. No, they're they? just they're snapshots, oh, snapshots, though. snapshots. Yeah. Back in the day when you had to do everything on film. Right. Um, oh, there's Paco. Okay. Nice. Um, and this is Paco's brother. He, this, we went to Miami. They did a premiere for the film in Miami. And so we all went there. Paco's wife, uh, Deborah. Yeah, they got they had a limo for us and everything. It was it was cool. Yeah. Oh, and here's uh, Paco and Mark, and this is uh, also in Miami when we did a little, uh, um, a little demonstration. There's some of the some of the kids. Uh, and here's yeah. Here we go. These are kids that were in the movie. Let me see if I have any more stuff. Oh, this is all only a strong. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Here we are, signing autographs. That's Amain, our uh, Capoeira Maestre. Um, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and his people who worked on the movie. Um, yeah, this is all from the, uh, with our little premiere in Miami. Oh, and this is, yeah. Oops, that's, so that's the end that, of Only oh, the Strong, okay? That's great. <laughs> I love it. That's so cool. This is a special collector's edition of Only the Strong. This is a DVD or? It's a DVD. It's um, uh, a French DVD. So it's, uh, um, cool. you know, region, region two. Um, here's some of the uh, VHSs. I'm sure you. I, I remember, sure. like, you know, when I would rent it, this would be the one that right, I would right. see. Um, and this is the one I think that um, that the the cover of the DVD like that I remember being yeah like, when they did the re-release yeah the re-release of it that's so cool let's see here that's the same one I think yep oh and here is the that's the DVD that's the DVD I I have at right home. right yeah it's so cool. But you should uh, you Look, should try to get your hands on this. Although you need a um, um, you need an all region player, you know, yeah. Because it's um, um, well, the making it, of it's yeah. It, it it's it's got some pretty cool stuff on it. Oh, it's got an interview with Mark Dacascos. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully they'll um, um, re-release it. Re-release this in in the U.S. Maybe it, for a Blu-ray would be would they great. They need to come out with a Blu-ray with the whole thing. Yeah, that would be that great. Would be, and and with your, you know, with it would the be, director's commentary, would be great. Shout Factory would be perfect for that. Mm -hmm. You know, right? And they they put, release a lot of cool stuff. You know, the problem is when it's um, when these movies uh, when it's with big companies, it's hard to get permission to do everything you want to do. Like we went through, uh, we just had to jump through hoops for the double impact. Uh, oh wow! Blu-ray. Because uh, it was owned by MGM, and they had all kinds of stipulations. I have here. Oh wow! Um, oh, look, these are. And here's the uh, the labels we had on on the vehicles when we were making the movie. Oh, neat. Um, here, look. I'm going to give you a few of these. I got a bunch of them. Here, you want these? <laughs> I can sign that too. I would love that. Okay. Holy cow. That's awesome. Look at that. That is so cool. Here's the, uh, here's the music Ooh, cassette. I don't, know that. don't okay. want to bend anything. Or... Oh, you can, here, just... Just put them over there? Okay. Over there. You can have that, yeah. 
Okay, only a strong meat. You see, I have the CD of it. Uh -huh. You know, um, the the soundtrack. Right. I still listen to it every now and then because it's. It's got a great soundtrack. In fact, it may have the best soundtrack of all of my movies because it's got all those cool songs. Well, isn't like did Mazda take that zoom zoom zoom? Yes, they did. Oh, yes, they did. Yeah. Did they have to pay for that? Um, like extra? I'm pretty sure they did. That's awesome. Oh, look, here's a bunch of stills. I wonder if they if there were only the strong fans that uh, that most, said, "Oh, most know. likely." Here's the um, the press book, okay, um, with with photos. That's so cool. Let's see what else I got here. I got all kinds of all kinds of little goodies here. Um, this is what they call it in France with Street Fighters. <laughs> That was, uh, that was before the Street Fighter movie with Van Damme. Yes, yes. Street Fighter. Well, there was a game called Street Fighter. Yeah, so. the Street Fighter, the video game. Um, what else have I got here that might be cool? Um, oh, oh, yeah. This is an article on uh, Mark DeCascos. This is, yeah, here's the. Um, the French uh, press book, Street Fighters. Um, awesome. Let's see. Oh, August Entertainment. They did our foreign sales. Um, let's see what else I got here. I think they have some more stills. Well, now what's this? Oh, it was Richard Coca. <laughs> That's awesome. He signed it to you. Yeah. That's so cool. And that I just gave you a copy of. Oh, look, here's some more. Let's just take a quick look at these stills, okay? That's for the hell of it. You being a fan, I know you like them. <laughs> yeah, so these are just some uh, publicity stills. Yeah, this is for one of the European releases, uh, uh, Polygram. And different companies owned it in uh, different territories. That's a good shot of Mark, huh? Yeah. I haven't seen that one anywhere. It should be an IMDb, I feel like. I <laughs> you think, know? yeah. Here's a good shot of Mark, okay. Jumping through the air, man. Yeah, yeah, well, and, and with no trampoline. Okay, he could... Oh, Mark. you can literally just jump oh, Mark, that high? Mark could do this stuff. Yeah, here's a yeah. good shot of Mark. Okay. That was like the, the time he was like uh, about to, like he was getting told that he couldn't, uh, you know, he had to go back to the States. Right, right. You know? Yeah, well, you know the movie well. Uh, well that's, <laughs> that's that still of me. It was taken on the set when we were shooting. That's so cool. Uh, oh, here we go. Here's, here's Luis Esteban. Okay. Nice. That's Luis there, my co-writer. And I'm, you know, when we did the basketball scene. Oh, you know? okay. Yeah, yeah, you can see him with the basketball. Okay, so he was in it twice. When you see the movie, oh yeah, he's in it a few times, quite okay. a few times. Um, when you watch the movie again, you'll probably recognize now him. Now I will, because yeah. now I know what he, what he looks All like. Right. Nice oh, here he is again. Okay, that's Luis. Oh yeah, I remember that scene right, so right. well. Um, you know they're they're fighting or whatever and then doing the kicking uh together i should i should digitize some of these yeah definitely okay well i may do that uh, <laughs> sometime soon i'm i'm glad to be of assistance to kind of getting you to yeah getting had, you to get the stuff had, out there some more i haven't looked through these archives here for a while well thank you so much this has been awesome all the cool stuff that you showed me here and uh like and thank you for giving me all the awesome stuff here uh, so, uh, I guess, what have you been up to lately? Well, I've got a few projects that uh, we're trying to get off the ground. Um, I might be doing one with Jeff Miller called Shank. And um, uh, it was an action movie that takes place in a prison. Nice. And then there's one I've been trying to get off the ground with Luis Esteban for a while. It's, it's called Metro Dog. And we actually did pre-production on that one. We were in... Uh, Moscow and Belgrade and uh, uh, that one's about these dogs that ride the subways in Moscow. This is a real thing. We didn't make this up. Um, and uh, 
A uh, few other projects that uh, uh, have been floating around for a while. I, I, I wrote a project that uh, takes place during the Revolutionary War, the American Revolutionary War. It's about a, uh, a real person uh, named Baron von Steuben, who was uh, a military advisor at Valley Forge to George Washington. And uh, uh, that's going to be a mini-series. Uh, uh, I've got people trying to get it set up as a, a limited series for uh, cable. So uh, we'll see what happens with that one. That's going to be very unusual for me. Uh, I, this is not the first historical movie that I was involved with. I also wrote uh, Legionnaire, which is a Van Damme movie, which took place in the 1920s in Morocco. And uh, there was a lot of a lot of research for that one also. So, um, yeah, hopefully we'll uh, this one. It's called the Baron of Valley Forge, and hopefully we'll get that one set up. We're trying to get it set up as a, a eight part limited series. So that's what I got on the burner right now. Awesome. Well, great. Thank you so much for this. This is awesome, especially since this is like off the cuff and you agreed to do it. So I really appreciate oh, it. Oh sure, no problem. Thank you so much. All right, you have a good one. Okay, thanks, Jonathan.